30 years ago, I was an undergraduate and I wanted to join the Peace Corps. So I applied, got the interview, and then life happened. I, 30 years went by. And, uh, but every year, for those 30 years, I would think about this, joining the Peace Corps. I'm grateful that 30 years later, in 2014, I accepted uh, an offer to come to Zambia and serve in the U.S. Peace Corps. I came in February 2015, and I've been serving in the northern Luapula province in the Kowambwa district. When I got to Kowambwa, it was this dusty town with boardwalks and wood front posts and things like that. And I imagined I could have turned to the left on that road and seen a horse come in with some dude with a 10-gallon hat cruising down that road. It would have fit right in. That was my first impression. But then they placed me out in the bush. I lived in a, uh, a small mud hut out in the bush, off the grid, no electricity, no cellular network. And I was there as a rural aquaculture promotion volunteer. So I was helping fish farming, helping improve the business of fish farming, helping uh, uh, improve food security through fish farming. But along the way, I started to see some things. Even when I provided some really good information about fish farming, which in itself is very profitable, can be. It's not very hard. You just have to do your work day after day, week after week. But I would notice that many people would stand back and look and, oh, we'll wait and see. I'll wait and see how that works out. And I started thinking, well, what's the issue here? And I know it comes from an ages-old practice of being very careful about what you do, because what you do has a direct effect on your survival. Well, I kind of came to this idea that, well, some new things have been adopted. What's the most, one of the most important foods in Zambia, in Shima, Ubwali? Right? There isn't a Zambian who can think of a day without Ubwali. Tafi chili le pa Ubwali, right? <laughs> and so, this is so important in Zambia, and yet these were new technologies that came. Maize, cassava, they both came from South America, Central America. They were adopted here. And so, it's that creative way of, of thinking and adopting new things. That's what I wanted to tap into. I particularly, I've worked with youth my entire life. And, and so I thought, well, how can I connect with these youth in a way that they would really love, they would really be interested in? Well, if I have my phone out anywhere, uh, I'll have 100 kids standing around me, right, looking at my phone to see what I'm looking at. So I know that technology is, is very interesting to many people, but youth especially. And so I started, um, I started to think, well, how can I connect with these kids in a way that really is meaningful for them? Now, I'll tell you the truth. There's lots of people that think I'm pretty crazy. I'm taking technology to these youth who live off the grid, no electricity, no cellular network, nothing like that. And so, but I just persisted. And I started putting together these small computers and then... Uh, working with kids in my Nsaka. This is called the Raspberry Pi. It's developed in the UK, Cambridge University. It's a very cool little computer. You can get right at it and look at the motherboard, and, and it has 11 programming languages on it, all kinds of open source desktop tools. And this is what I opened up. Many of them don't even speak English. I speak a little Bemba, but we were programming games. They were actually making games. This is Sitting in my Nsaka or by the side of a fish pond, this is what we were doing. Well, this kept, this kept growing to a bigger and bigger idea. And I had to build consensus. And, you know, I had these people that would, would be thinking, well, what's this guy taking this technology out to this rural area? What are these kids going to do with it? And I just persisted. And gradually, from one side of the room, to the other, I'm winning the hearts and minds of these people. So I would say that most people now that have witnessed this 
process now are, are, are champions even. I started developing consensus, building a team, working on the equipment, finding ways to fund this project. And we, we assembled a, a team of Peace Corps volunteers uh, and technologically savvy young Zambians from Lusaka that were really interested in coding. And we put together this camp. We called it Girls Can Code. Technology Camp 2017. The kids came from these rural areas, very rural areas. The youngest was 10, the oldest was 19. So we had a broad spectrum, but we brought them all together, teaching them skills and leadership, teamwork, Ubuntu. Ubuntu, of course, is the principle of I am because we are. And, and, so, and we also brought in technology. We had these really busy days where we would start with 45-minute sessions, but of that 45-minute session, we would focus on 20 minutes of hands-on. And then we would break for some other activity. We had ropes, leadership activities, these other kinds of uh, teamwork building things that were, were powerful for these young girls. Well, we did this for six days straight. Could you imagine going to an intense camp for six days straight and every minute of the day from 7 in the morning to 19 at night is, is filled? Well, I'll tell you what, with the schedule that we had, we alternated the activities, the technical activities with the non-technical activities, and these kids could handle it. This was a powerful experience for the for the girls that attended. I, they came and they have changed. I have six girls, they're mentors here today. You might have seen them walking around and their lives are changed. It's a little... <laughs> but the vision is, it's like I'm, I'm like, um, it's like, a, an, like I got an alien brain implant. I can't stop thinking about this thing. I can't stop working on it. And I can't stop winning people over to this vision. I didn't even know that I was going to do this. when I mean, I was coming as a fish farming volunteer, and I didn't even know I would be captivated by this thing myself. My imagination is, is lit up. And um, I think if you talk with some of the other people that have been involved with this, you'll see the same thing holds for them. In fact, I met with my, uh, the, the adult mentors uh, that came from Kawamba today, and they're taking it to a level that I hadn't even imagined. So I'm really excited to see this thing keep growing. What happens is uh, the, during the camp, the, the teams, they come as teams, a female mentor with two girls, and they come as a team with the mission to go back to their communities and share their knowledge. So they develop an action plan and they use that action plan to, to carry them back to their village. And so this is one of the teams in, I think it's Mutiti, and they are on fire for sharing the skills that they've learned. So you can see this little book she has. That's uh, one of the main programming languages, but she's teaching the classes now. And they share with each other. They use these little, these, these small computers that have, uh, they run on solar lamps, low power, five watts, one amp. And they, they make games, they play them, they share them, and they're, it's powerful. Where are we going? We've proven that girls can code. So, with uh, my technical collaborators in Lusaka, we are expanding this to every province. There's seven provinces that Peace Corps serves, and we're going to expand it um, over, over time. We're, the, our next camps are rolling out in, in August. They'll be in December and April, and we have a vision for, for building that out to include more advanced camps. These kids will work through technical skills, eventually leading to what I call a pipeline of Zambia's hidden talent to opportunities through various higher level trainings that they can get in, in um, urban centers. But as my 
mentors from Kawamba have illustrated today, they're not going to wait for something to happen in Lusaka. They're going to bring it to Kawamba. Thank you. <laughs>